This is the Chinese Long March 6 rocket launching. On board, 18 satellites from the Changfang Mega Constellation, which is ultimately intended to place 14,000 such objects in low Earth orbit. A few days later, the most powerful Chinese rocket Long March 5B launched from the Wenchang Space Launch Site, placing satellites from the Guowang project into orbit. This project is ultimately intended to wrap Earth with a network of 13,000 satellites. In total, Beijing wants to place as many as 40,000 orbital objects in low Earth orbit. And as in any race, they want to do it as quickly as possible. Low Earth orbits, or LEO, remained empty for eons. This changed only on October 4, 1957, when the Soviets placed Sputnik in low orbit, beginning a fierce Cold War rivalry between the two blocs. However, from the LEO perspective, little changed. Several hundred satellites appeared in orbit, but these were just grains of sand. The real race for LEO began only recently. On May 23, 2019, the first Starlink satellites appeared in Earth orbit, heralding a new era and domain of rivalry that is constantly gaining momentum. Still, in 2019, only a few hundred objects were in LEO. Today, there are already over 10,000. And in a decade or so, it could be as many as 100,000. We are talking about an entirely new space, providing communication, observation, and military access over every place on the globe. However, the number of slots in this cosmic wild west is limited, and there is one leader, Elon Musk. SpaceX, outpacing the competition, has secured pole position for itself. Rivals, funded among others by Chinese capital, want to quickly make up for lost ground. But this is proving more difficult than it might seem. Why is China losing the race for low Earth orbits? Let's see. Starlink, Guowang, Tianfan. These aren't just satellite constellations. They are constellations of influence. Whoever dominates low Earth orbit controls communication, data, and surveillance over the entire planet. The new space race is already underway, but this time the stakes aren't prestige. They are market and geopolitical leverage. In a world where every rocket launch can shift the balance of power, it pays to have tools that help you act before others do. That is why I use XTB an investment app that lets me react to global trends in real time. With XTB you can invest in thousands of stocks and ETFs, commission-free up to 100,000 euros monthly turnover. Do you believe in the rise of SpaceX or China's push to catch up? Every move in orbit can be an opportunity. Check out XTB in the description and by doing so you support this channel. And remember that investing involves risk. China always thinks long-term. This bond mode usually comes up during discussions about Chinese Communist Party policy. Therefore, upon seeing the commercial success of Elon Musk's Starlink and its subsequent military applications in Ukraine, Xi Jinping set a grand goal for the Chinese nation. A Chinese satellite mega constellation that would surpass the achievements of its American counterpart. Even a concrete number was given. 43,000 satellites over the coming decades. Once the leader's vision had been outlined, scientists and engineers got to work. According to data from the Acclaim IP database by Anaqua, the Chinese filed 2,449 patents related to LEO satellite technology in 2023, a 1,400% increase from 162 patents in 2019. This was followed by concrete action. As early as September 2021, the Chinese announced the Guowang National Network Project, Beijing's ambitious response to Elon Musk's Starlink. They submitted an application to the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, to reserve nearly 30,000 spots 
in low Earth orbit and began work on their own satellite constellation program. The project was granted priority status and received $1.4 billion in funding. Simultaneously, the Space Sail Project, also known as Changfan, Thousand Sails, was launched. Although this is not a government initiative, it is not private either. The program is overseen by Shanghai Spacecom Satellite Technology, which secured nearly a billion dollars in funding from state investment funds in 2024. In reality, the project is backed by Shanghai's municipal authorities. Changfan is even more ambitious than Guawang, it plans to deploy 14,000 satellites by 2030, including 648 this year alone. Both projects were launched around the same time. The first 10 Guawang satellites were launched into low Earth orbit on December 16, 2024, using Long March 5B rockets from the Wangchang launching site. Earlier still, on August 6, 2024, Changfan, also known as G60 Starlink, placed its first satellites in orbit. At that time, a Long March 6A rocket carried 18 satellites to LEO. Following the successful deployment of satellites to LEO, Changfan signed its first contract with Brazil in November, which the media noted as marking the beginning of a potential rivalry with Starlink. While rivalry has indeed begun, it is currently more akin to a confrontation resembling a quarter-mile race between a Tesla Model S and a Penny Farthing bicycle. Guawang wants to have 13,000 satellites in LEO by the end of 2030, Qianfan as many as 14,000, the status as of mid-2025, 40 Guawang satellites and 90 Qianfan satellites, of which 17 have failed. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starlink 8,094 satellites, as of the first half of August, with over 2,300 this year alone. The American's colossal advantage comes from reusable rockets, the Falcon 9. The Chinese are forced to launch satellites with single-use Long March 5B, 6A or 8 rockets, and there are few of these. As a result, Guawang and Qianfan must compete for limited resources not only with each other, but also with other missions of the China National Space Administration. Of course, given that Guawang is the central project, it has priority. But despite its earlier start, it is losing to the Shanghai Initiative. What's more, the project is in serious trouble. The ITU, or International Telecommunication Union, issues licenses for spots in low Earth orbit, but they are not indefinite the applicant must successively implement plans to maintain the reservation. The ITU requires Guawang to launch at least 10% of satellites by 2026. That is 1300. So far they have managed to send 40. Fan is also significantly delayed. Starlink, meanwhile, not only isn't waiting for competitors' moves, it is engaging additional drive modules. Starlink had a difficult start. The first Tintin AB tests were delayed and the launch was postponed several times. However, once Elon Musk's project entered the implementation phase, it really took off. On May 23, 2019, SpaceX launched the first Starlink satellites using Falcon 9 rocket. At that time, 60 satellites reached LEO. Since 2020, SpaceX has placed thousands of Starlink satellites in orbit each year. In total, SpaceX launched 9,314 satellites, of which 8,075 are operational as of the beginning of August. The target is to have 42,000 satellites at various LEO levels. In this case, these numbers are credible. SpaceX spends $10 billion annually on R&D and Starlink already generates revenues in excess of this figure. This is expected to reach $12 billion in 2025 and $50 billion by the end of the decade. As an early pioneer, Starlink enjoys a significant advantage in the form of Falcon 9 rockets, the space workhorses of the early space exploration era. Reusable rockets can reduce the cost of a launch from as much as $150 million for traditional rockets to just 20 million. Furthermore, 
Once the powerful Starship is operational, SpaceX will be able to launch several hundred satellites at once. The Chinese are also attempting to develop their own reusable rocket, but none of their attempts have been successful thus far. During the latest test, the Tianlong-3 Space Pioneer rocket crashed in the mountains near the city of Gongji. China will most likely make up the lost ground eventually, but experts speculate that they are currently 5 to 10 years behind American SpaceX. However, the question arises, why is Beijing so keen to dethrone Starlink? LEO, low Earth orbit, is one of the most contested spaces within direct human influence. Satellites in this orbit are relatively close to Earth, at an altitude of 200 to 2000 km, making LEO cheap and easy to reach. The close distance also ensures low transmission latency, for example for the Internet, or guarantees higher resolution for Earth observation, than more distant MEO and GEO orbits. 36,000 km above Earth. Orbiting over the entire planet, including, from a geopolitical perspective, rival territory, provides colossal advantages. These include observational, reconnaissance and communication capabilities, and, with technological progress, potentially even military capabilities. For this reason, LEO is becoming a new domain of rivalry, reminiscent of the clashes between explorers from several centuries ago. And here space is also limited. Already now there are 11,000 satellites in LEO, of which 8,000 are Starlinks. In the next decade or two, their number could grow to as many as 100,000, leading to concerns about the so-called Kessler syndrome. When an excess of orbital debris leads to cascading collisions and threats to the entire orbit. Therefore, LEO operates somewhat according to the principle of first come, first served. Quote, the end game is to occupy as many orbital slots as possible, said Chaitanya Giri, a space technology expert at India's Observer Research Foundation. In reality, however, only Elon Musk is currently racing against himself. Since the time of Sputnik, SpaceX has already launched over 40% of all satellites. In theory, these are mainly civilian applications, such as providing broadband internet or Earth observation. In practice, however, it is clear that military applications are also at stake, as the situation in Ukraine has demonstrated. This year, the American think tank RAND published a study showing that the Chinese Communist Party quote, views Starlink as a tool of military power, providing additional impetus for the government's strategy to develop its own capabilities. Starlink's role in providing communications to Ukrainian forces fighting the Russian invasion, quote, confirmed their view. A September article written by scientists from the People's Liberation Army University of Engineering stated that, quote, the excellent performance of Starlink satellites in this Russian-Ukrainian conflict will certainly prompt the US and Western countries to use Starlink extensively in possible hostilities in Asia. Unquote. Starlink is already capable of determining the fate of battles and perhaps even wars. In his biography of Elon Musk, Walter Isaacson recounts a story when Ukrainians planned an attack on the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Crimea. The Ukrainian military intended to send six sea drones with explosives and guide them using the Starlink system. However, as Isaacson writes, quote, the Ukrainians didn't know that Musk had decided not to activate Starlink coverage off the coast of Crimea. When the military found out, Musk began receiving frantic calls and messages asking him to turn on the signal. Musk, however, refused. Without Starlink connectivity, Ukraine had to abandon the operation. Therefore, the Middle Kingdom knows that in the event of a war over Taiwan, it must have its own satellite system modeled on Starlink. Although the Chinese have only just begun sending satellites to low Earth orbit, there is already speculation that they may have dual use. Beijing launched only 10 satellites using its most powerful Long March 5B rocket. This suggests that Chinese satellites may be equipped with more than just communication technologies. 
However, extraterritorial reach technology would also fit well with China's strategy of expanding its influence in the global South countries. This has its own name, the Digital Silk Road, as the digital branch of the Belt and Road Initiative. Starlink surpassed 6 million subscribers in May this year, but this represents a mere fraction of the billions of people worldwide who still lack internet access, the vast majority of whom reside in the Global South and often inhabit inaccessible regions. China would certainly be happy to connect these people to the internet, but not for free, of course. Payment could come in the form of state resources such as raw materials, infrastructure or territory, a model that is already in place. Moreover, in such a model, the internet provider could also impose its social model, consequently limiting access to certain content that is inconvenient for Beijing, and shaping the perception of entire societies. And that would give it considerable authority. The Chinese Space Agency has already signed 117 space cooperation agreements with 37 countries and four international organizations and this will certainly not end there. However, in reality, Beijing is very far from this goal, and Starlink is occupying space in Liyue. Furthermore, the Chinese aren't even second in line. The second is OneWeb, a Franco-British Indian project run by Utilsat, which operates a fleet of 648 satellites. Meanwhile, the Canadian company Telesat is developing the Lightspeed project which will comprise 200 satellites. Jeff Bezos also entered the fray, recently launching the first 27 satellites of Project Kuiper. The plan involves placing 3,200 satellites in Leo. However, it is not the case that these projects are financed by the government only in China. In fact, all of these projects received government subsidies in some form. Starlink already has an operational business but it relies largely on government contracts. The main shareholders of Utilsat are the governments of France and the UK, as well as India's Bharti Enterprises. Telesat began operations thanks to Canadian government loan worth over $1.5 billion. The European Union also recognizes the importance of its own communication megaconstellation. In November last year, it selected a consortium to create the European Iris Squared Mega Constellation. Iris Squared is an important pillar of our resilience, tweeted Christoph Grudler, a member of European Parliament's Industry Committee. We need this quickly, he added. Iris Squared is intended as the EU's strategic response to Starlink dominance, operating on a much smaller scale, 290 satellites, but with a greater focus on sovereignty and security. The project is being implemented by the Space Rice Consortium, which is led by Utilsat, Hispasat from Spain, and SES from Luxembourg. The contract value is over 10 billion euros. The Americans are also developing something similar. The proliferated warfighter space architecture, which is being developed by the Space Development Agency, will ultimately consist of hundreds of satellites integrated with US and Allied defense systems. The goal? Uninterrupted communication and tracking of hostile missiles, including hypersonic ones. Tranche 1 includes contracts with Lockheed, Northrop and SpaceX. Other European countries, including Germany, Britain and Italy, are also considering implementing their own national megaconstellations. Although China has grand ambitions and billions of dollars of state funding, it is not currently dominant in low Earth orbit. The race for LEO has only just begun, but Starlink has already gained a significant advantage. Every month of delay means hundreds of new Starlinks in an increasingly crowded orbit. A race for influence, control and power is underway in LEO. And although Beijing has embarked on a long march, for now it is looking at Elon Musk's back.